you published a paper in 2016 with Chen Mu. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I pronounced that right. right. And it was on dairy fats. Right. And that was I found that paper to be particularly interesting. I'm interested in what were the major takeaways of that research and, and how your views have specifically maybe evolved um, when it comes to this food group, dairy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, dairy is, I think, the most interesting food group because uh, – it's very complicated, and it's not like sugar-sweetened beverages where just everything is bad, no good. But dairy clearly has a lot of uh, positive benefits, a lot of beneficial essential nutrients in it, but also uh, some potential harmful effects as well, consumed in high amounts, especially all, all through life. So, uh, And dairy, actually, our, our family has been a dairy family for generations, and I grew up in a dairy research farm when I was young. So it's uh, it's always been of interest, and um, the uh, basically dairy looks like uh, it's sort of in the middle of the spectrum between healthful food and unhealthy food. Uh, so if we looked at total mortality, we see that of course the the worst is processed red meat, then uh, eggs and, and unprocessed red meat dairy is sort of in the middle. Uh, but if you really want to go to low risk, then healthy plant foods would be uh, are associated with the lowest mortality. So whether you say dairy is good or bad, again, it's the substitution that's so critical. If you're if you're having some uh, dairy foods replacing uh, red meat, or I sort of use the example of uh, buying a sandwich, do you want bologna or cheese or peanut butter? <laughs> and uh, uh, the, the best would be peanut butter uh, and all of them on whole grain, of course. But um, for diabetes, uh, it's, it looks pretty, dairy is pretty neutral. Uh, for weight gain, uh, it's, it, there's some suggestion in some studies that there might be a little bit less weight gain. But when we looked at it in detail, it looked like most of that was coming, for, the benefit was coming from yogurt. And we adjusted for yogurt. We didn't see benefit for weight gain or type 2 diabetes. What about the, the fat content? If someone's trying to navigate this, so within the yogurt section of the grocery store mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. um, even milk, there's high fat versions mm -hmm. and low fat versions. Mm -hmm. I think this is a really interesting thing to explore. Um, there's a lot of research on w what are the types of saturated fats that are in dairy. Are they behaving differently to saturated fats, say, in, in meat? What would be important for people to understand here? Yeah. Well, uh, for yogurt, uh, it looks like that, uh, and other dairy foods, it looks like the, it doesn't make a great deal of difference whether it's high fat or low fat uh, for most of the outcomes we've looked at. Uh, but the worst, of course, is if it's low fat and then you put back a lot of sugar in its place. That's not going to be the healthiest choice. And of course, if you look at the grocery store shelves, a lot of these low fat dairy products are very high, uh, high in added sugar. But if we look just at dairy fat itself, it's definitely not an optimal fat. And I know there's been ideas that it's, oh, it's got some medium chain. C15 yes, pops up a lot. <laughs> that comes up. It turns out that's very nonspecific. It's not specific to dairy. Doesn't and your body make that as well? Your body can make a little bit, uh, but, most, but it can also come from beef as well. And it can come from uh, metabolized from other forms of uh, other fatty acids as well. So, unfortunately, it's not a very good indi right. indicator. I think I read one study where vegans had the highest C15 levels. Really? Which I, I thought hadn't was seen super that, interesting. Yeah, you can get it from non dairy, definitely from non dairy sources. But we did a paper specifically looking at dairy fat compared to other types of fat. And uh, clearly, uh, for total cardiovascular disease, total mortality, uh, the plant oils were better than dairy fat. Uh, fat from red meat uh, looked a little worse than dairy fat, but that may be still the things that were other things in red meat that are contributing to that. And there was one important study done by colleagues at Laval University in Canada, actually funded by the dairy industry, to look at the question of uh, was uh, dairy fat from milk uh, not, or said the other way around, is dairy fat in cheese better than dairy fat from milk? And there's been a lot of talk about that over the years. And they did a really well-designed study. As it turned out, there was a slightly 
less adverse effect on LDL cholesterol from dairy fat and cheese than from milk. But to their credit, they also had uh, two other arms to the study. One was a high mono plant oil, and the other was a high polyunsaturated plant oil. And both of those had dramatically lower LDL cholesterol compared to either form of dairy fat. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really exactly compared what... Compared to what? Co the, yeah. Yeah, compared, compared to what, yes. Right. So, so, so if you're swapping out red meat for dairy, if that kind of made sense in a dietary swap, then that could be an improvement. Slight, yeah. Slight small. improvement, but then going from dairy to some sort of plant fat would be an improvement again. Right, yeah. Or if you're thinking of these just as added fats, uh, also very important because we do add quite a bit, maybe about 20% of our calories are added fats that cheese, I mean, excuse me, that butter is not going to be healthy c compared to uh, plant oils like olive oil or canola oil or, or soybean oil. Butter tends to have even a worse effect on LDL, right, compared to cheese. My understanding was that was because of how refined it is that milk fat globule gets broken down. Is that is that why it would have a more deleterious effect? Uh, I'm not really sure there is, a, but I think those are small differences. And of right. course, you, it's hard to compare those directly because cheese has the protein and uh, that's going to uh, uh, other components. And just the amount, if you're using it on a total gram basis, the you get more saturated fat from butter than you would from cheese. So I think all of that makes sense from a substitution point of view. Question that I think that naturally leads to is, of course, if we look at all foods and you kind of think, okay, if you replace that for that, it's healthier, you could end up just keep doing that and you're left with one food. <laughs> so we have to have a dietary pattern. Right. So uh, how does someone who is including dairy in their diet today think about its inclusion. So if we come back to dietary pattern, from a dose point of view, I think you, you, you did mention this at the beginning, but I think it's worth sort of underlining yeah. again, um, what would the recommendation be there? Yeah. Well, I think it's important to look at this through several lens. First of all, the, the uh, direct effect on an individual, then the whole dietary food system, and then diet, then sustainability as well. Because if we don't get climate change right, we don't get anything right either. And for an individual, uh, it's uh, I, I think uh, given all the pluses and minuses of dairy, uh, zero a range of zero to two servings of dairy could be healthy. But I think a, one serving a day is a pretty reasonable number to aim for, that's what I do. And uh, I often, probably mostly in the form of yogurt, which does look like it may be a little bit better than other forms of dairy mm -hmm. foods possibly because of the microbiome effects. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, choose a, a, f a full fat dairy without added sugar or do you go for a low fat <laughs> without added sugar? Yeah, well, I think the important point is if you're just having one serving a day, it doesn't matter very much whether it's low fat or full fat. If you're having three servings a day, then you definitely don't want that much dairy fat in your diet. Uh, but uh, if I look, step back, uh, none of that fat gets thrown away or burned. It's too valuable. So once that cow is milk, somebody's eating that fat. Dairy fat, and often it's the same person having it as cream or, or ice cream or something else. Uh, so th there's no public health benefit of dairy fat. The only benefit is to the dairy industry because they get a double profit with low fat products because they get this and sell the high fat uh, food separately. I'm I'm laughing a little bit because you said ice cream, and there was a study that was published must have been three or four months ago, you probably saw this, that showed ice cream consumption was associated with less, I'm not sure of what the outcome was. It was either a cardiometabolic outcome or mortality. Right. Uh, and a lot of people posted that to say, see, right. how can epi epidemiology <laughs> be, be trusted if it's coming up with results like this? Yeah, uh, we we did. I think that either I think that had some of our data in it, the one that just came out. It was, um, I think, a com meta-analysis, but uh, we did see this, and uh, first of all, the amount still were, it wasn't daily consumption of ice cream. It was low, and probably just due to chance, the amounts consumed probably wouldn't have much effect. And I think if somebody likes ice cream, you know, have it once a week or something, uh, enjoy it, but not not every day. Although growing up in Wisconsin, I did think we did have it every day. Uh, but um, there could be some benefits from the calcium, perhaps. That, but maybe. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to convince myself ice cream's healthy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I would also want to look back to the climate part of it too, that and this uh, Lancet Commission that I co-chaired a, co-chaired a few years ago, we did look at how can we feed the world population a diet that's both healthy and sustainable. And we, for dairy, we said there is there is flexibility. There uh, may, maybe a range of zero. You don't need to have dairy. You can get your nutrients from other sources, or it could be up to two servings a day, just strictly for individual health. But if we actually looked at, but dairy has a big greenhouse gas emission footprint. Uh, both because there's you have to feed the animal quite a bit of feed in this country. Ninety-five percent of the dairy is grain-fed dairy, and uh, there's weak conversion of food to edible human edible food. Um, but also a lot of greenhouse gas emissions from ruminants in general, uh, methane production. And if everybody consumed two servings of dairy a day, we, we couldn't stay within greenhouse gas limits even if, if we totally eliminated fossil fuel consumption. So uh, from a, both a sustainability perspective and a health perspective, about one serving a day seems like a, a good target number. And if somebody really wants to get calcium from a white liquid, uh, some of the plant milk products are good. Uh, alternatives, I think, are, are good products, like soy milk actually gives you some healthy fats and it uh, seems to be maybe some benefits from uh, the phytoestrogens. Can someone be just as healthy if they decide not to consume any dairy at all and and consume the right foods in place of that? I, I'm quite sure of that, yes. Uh, that Interestingly, uh, high dairy consumption is sort of an evolutionary aberration uh, that relatively recent and only in parts of the world I... Uh, Took a, this doesn't prove anything, but it was interesting. Took a little survey when uh, at our, one of our department meetings in nutrition, and uh, asked how much dairy people consumed as uh, uh, after they were uh, young, very young children, and more than half said zero, uh, and they were mostly people from Asia who mm-hmm. uh, just don't consume dairy. Don't dairy is not part of the eating culture, and that's a big chunk of the world, and also part, many parts of Africa and Latin America. And, you know, these people are all college professors and doing pretty well at Harvard. So uh, they may end up a little bit shorter. Now, whether that's because dairy does accelerate height uh, when consumed during childhood, and whether that's good or bad. Uh, actually, I started looking at that because height is a risk factor for many cancers. And, uh, it, it, and dairy is the one food that does drive height. That's interesting. So height's a risk factor for many cancers, presumably because of just having more growth factors around? I think probably so, that milk definitely has, uh, milk consumption does increase insulin-like growth factor in our blood. There have been randomized studies that show that. And I think that's probably that acceleration of cell multiplication during childhood, which we know is a critical time, is probably the reason why milk consumption is related to uh, more cancer. Uh, that's hypothesis, but we do see the, the dots there that are not too hard to connect. Also, interestingly, when we looked at adolescent milk consumption and rate of fractures later in life, there was absolutely no benefit with high dairy consumption. There was only increased uh, fractures later in life among boys. And I think that's due to the growth acceleration and it creates long bones that are easier to break than mm. short bones. When it comes to gut health, I couldn't find a supplement that did it all. So I formulated one with gastroenterologist, Dr. Will Bolsowitz. It's called Daily Microbiome Nutrition or DMN by 38 Terra. And to our knowledge, it is the most complete prebiotic formula on the market today. We built DMN to support a healthy, diverse microbiome, which we now know plays a critical role in everything from digestion to immunity, metabolism, and even brain health. What sets DMN apart is that it contains clinically proven doses of ingredients like actazin and solanol, and it's a very concentrated source of polyphenols, all conveniently combined to nourish your gut bacteria and promote true microbial diversity. No artificial sweeteners, no gums or fillers, just science-backed plant-based ingredients in a once a day, incredibly delicious drink. So if you're looking to fuel your microbes and enjoy all the benefits that come with that, head to 38terra.com and use the code SIMON 
for 10% off. That's 38TERA.com and use the code SIMON to feed those gut bugs. 